Now this subject is sometimes called truth, religion, psychology. As I see it, these are all the same subjects. I should say the same subject, but the approach to it is from a different angle, and therefore it gets a different name. But it is the thing that every one of us is looking for, either consciously or unconsciously. It's the actual goal in life for everyone, for every being. And so few of us in the world today are in this direction. Everyone is looking for happiness, but they're looking for it in the wrong places. They look for happiness where it isn't. And therefore we have this uh, unnecessary and unusual condition today where we have almost everything we want in a material sense. And we have less happiness now than we had 30 years ago when we didn't have the things that we have today. Now, my object is to try to give to you what I have seen to point out to you the direction which, if you will take it, you will find this happiness. And uh, the best way for me to get this across to you is to have you ask questions. And in the process of your asking questions, I try to point out the way or the direction in which you should look for you to find the answer. Uh, as I know this, it's a strictly do-it-yourself thing. I point out the way you get the answers. Unfortunately, it cannot be taught uh, as an intellectual subject as we learn things in school. If it could, everyone could be given this wonderful state of constant happiness with no sorrow just by being spoken to. <coughs> So the method comes out to be one of uh, evolvement, where it evolves from within outwards. And the place where we find this happiness is within our very own selves. So most of my answers, if not all, try to get you to go within, to look there for the answers. We should take full responsibility for whatever happens to us because we are the cause for everything that happens to us in life. Everything that happens is initiated in a thought prior to the incident. But because we have put in a thing called time, we forget that it's sometime and sometimes long before the thing happened, we had that thought. Someone comes along uh, with a thought of theirs, and when the two thoughts complement each other, two people meet. But again, we have to go within to discover that our thinking determines everything that happens to us, and uh, that thinking is conscious and unconscious also. And it's the unconscious thinking that is... <laughs> so let me tell you one that's hard to believe. When I start proving this law, 
It was worked in small ways, and one day I said, my gosh, it's working. All I need to do is to dare to think big. And so I said, what's the biggest thing I can think of? A Cadillac car, special built body. I had a picture of it, and I was driving it already, and I let go of it. Well, in about two weeks, an acquaintance came up to me and said, Oh, Lester, I just bought you the most beautiful Cadillac, special built body. He said, A friend of mine bought it and doesn't want it, and I got it for only $4,000. This was back in the early 50s. And he said, $4,000. I looked at him. He said, Don't worry about the money. I'll pay for it. Honest. <laughs> hey, what do you mean? You know, oh, no, no, that, that was a conscious thought. I know, I know, but uh, conscious that you were... I was proving uh, the operation... Yeah, you were what? trying to get a Cadillac with your dog. Mm. That's what I'm trying to get at. Or you no, I, I said, gee, I can have a Cadillac just by thinking Cadillac. That's what I'm trying to get at. I, I picture the Cadillac. I saw it. I was sitting there. I could feel the <coughs> upholstery in the car when I was driving it. It was mine. And I let go of it. As already accomplished. He said, that already accomplished point is a uh, big part of doing it. Does it help to identify yourself with your that which you want? <clears throat> that would be picture. Yes. Well, actually, that's what you did when you broke it up all through your Yeah, I, I was in that car. I was... I was one with it. Now anyone can do this, if he or she will. But it takes a, a thought, uncluttered with other thoughts, or to express it another way, it takes the conviction. It, you're absolutely convinced that'll do it. Conviction. You don't have to uh, know metaphysics. You don't have to be good. You just have to have a conviction. That'll bring it about. Because the mind is an instrument of creation only. by trying it first in small ways. It's not too hard to dare to demonstrate a very small thing. When that works, that gives you more confidence in it. Try it a second time, a third time, and it builds up. Eliminate the concept of limitation, and you're back to your natural, unlimited state. Say that this is our, this is really in reality a kind of a dream world, right? And that we finally wake up to the fact that we are what we are seeking. Uh, Someday you'll laugh at, at all these efforts you're going through now because that which you're going to find out you are in the future, you are right now and always have been. You may be kicking up a big fuss, right. trying to become that which you are. That's very hard for me to accept. That is to understand. I'd, I'd like you to go uh, into that a little bit more. Where can you see something that isn't in your mind? Can you? No. Everything uh, you see, I, where I do you see it? I have a feeling it? of the truth that you say. <coughs> yet there must be a reality beyond myself. <coughs> True, it takes this instrument to realize it. But there is a reality beyond myself, isn't there? I don't think so. But look, everything that you perceive...